the end of the first half of this video lecture, I asked this question. If you push with a 10 newton force on this block, what's the magnitude of the static friction force? Now, I hope you didn't do it the wrong way. The wrong way would have been to say, oh, that static friction is mu s m g, or you might have reasoned mu s times the perpendicular force, and in this case the perpendicular force is m g, and that gives you 30 newtons. No, no, that is incorrect, because the, f the force of static friction is not mu s times the perpendicular force. That's the maximum static friction. All that's telling us is that whatever the static friction is, it had better be less than 30 newtons. So the correct way to do it is to realize, well, the block isn't sliding, its acceleration is zero, and so the vector sum of forces must be zero, and so the static friction must be exactly cancelling the 10 newton force that you're exerting to the right, it must be 10 newtons to the left. Or in other words, you could set up your axes, you could draw your free body diagram, looking at it, you could do your x component of the equation of motion and just solve that for the force of static friction, and you see that its magnitude is equal to the magnitude of the force that your hand is exerting on the block. So let me just summarize these points about static friction. It always varies to be just right to prevent slipping from happening, and so we generally have to solve for it out of the equation of motion. Its maximum value is given by a formula like this, and is independent of contact area, and proportional to the size of the perpendicular force exerted by the same surface. And note that that mu s is a property of the surfaces which we call the coefficient of static friction. This formula which claims that the static friction is mu s times the perpendicular force is wrong. And this is even more wrong. So wrong, oh so wrong, don't even think it. On the other hand, once things start sliding, things are simpler. Kinetic friction is a much simpler force than static friction in many respects. It is actually given by mu k times the perpendicular force. So, and like the static friction, this is independent of contact area. There's that same proportionality to the perpendicular force. And the coefficient of kinetic friction is again a property of the surfaces. And note, we already know that when sliding starts, the kinetic friction that replaces the maximum static friction is smaller than the maximum static friction was. And that in general tells you that the kinetic friction coefficient is smaller than the static friction coefficient between the same surfaces. When I briefly showed you a table of coefficients of friction earlier, you might have been wondering about this column, rolling friction coefficients. When an object rolls, there's some compression that goes on at the front of the contact, and some re-expansion at the back of where the object is in contact with the surface that it's rolling over. But this is not totally reversible. The re-expansion doesn't quite undo the compression perfectly. And so that means some energy is dissipated in this process, and a wheel or ball or something rolling along must slow down gradually because of dissipation. And because it's slowing down, that tells us there must be a force back against the rolling. And this is a rolling friction. But notice that these rolling friction coefficients are very small, and so that tells you that forces of rolling friction are also very small. And so we can pretty much always ignore them for our purposes, and we will. One of the reasons I'm not putting more emphasis on this topic is that these models of friction are approximate. So we have these models that the kinetic friction is proportional to the perpendicular force by the same surface, and the proportionality constant is called a kinetic friction coefficient, and that the maximum static friction has a very similar formula with a static friction coefficient, and these are both independent of contact area, and I didn't say so, but also somewhat counterintuitive for most people, these forces are independent of speed.
But this whole model is approximate. It holds approximately some of the time. But sometimes these do depend on the contact area or the relative speed of surfaces. And it's not always strictly proportional to the perpendicular force. And these friction coefficients aren't constants at all. They're rather variable. They depend on temperature and all sorts of other things.